So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sabrina Elias, uh, Secretary NYAB, uh, welcoming you all in the inauguration ceremony of the International Colloquium on Authentic Scientific Publication. So today is the first day of this two-day long pro program. This colloquium is arranged by a National Young Academy of Bangladesh in collaboration with Inter-Academy Partnership. So this is a group working group activity of NYAB uh, who are working on creating awareness against predatory academic practices. So without spending more time, I would like to request NYAB president, Professor Dr. Mohammed Abdul Basit and chair of ICASP 22, uh, Basit sir, to deliver his welcome speech regarding this colloquium and introduce our today's keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Mohammed Jahid Hassan. Thanks, Professor Basit, it's up to you. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Dear participants, researchers, and faculty members, on behalf of National Young Academy of Bangladesh, I welcome you in the inaugural session of the International Colloquium on Authentic Scientific Publications. We sincerely acknowledge the funding from Inter-Academy Partnership for arranging this colloquium. We are grateful to Buet administration, in particular to Honorable Vice-Chancellor Professor Dr. Sattva Prasad Majumdar and Professor Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Abdul Jabbar Khan for providing us all logistic support. We extend our thanks to University of Dhaka and particularly to Professor Dr. A.S. Maksud Kamal Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor Academic for supporting us. I must thank Professor Dr. Hasina Khan, UGC Professor and Secretary Bangladesh Academy of Sciences for her continuous inspiration. Our sincere thanks to a number of professors and researchers from India, in particular, Professor Ravibhata Mukherjee, Professor Mahesh Kumar, Professor Suparna Chatterjee, and Professor Rajendra Singh Dhaka for their sincere collaboration to arrange this event. I am delighted to mention that in this inaugural session, Professor M. Jahid Hassan from Princeton University USA will deliver a speech. I think I am the least qualified person to introduce a renowned professor like Jahid Hassan. However, very briefly, Professor Hassan is the Higgins Higgins Professor of Physics at Princeton University USA. His primary research area is quantum physics and quantum topology. Born in Dhaka, Bangladesh, Hassan completed his higher secondary schooling at Dhanbandi Government High School and Dhaka College, then studied physics and mathematics at the University of Texas at Austin. He obtained his PhD in 2002 from Stanford University. Hassan is the principal investigator of laboratory for topological quantum matter and advanced spectroscopy at Princeton University and a visiting faculty scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California. He co-proposed and called it the scattering spectroscopy, Marilyn, beamline, and end station facility at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, and developed a laboratory for ultrafast and coherent quantum phenomena at Princeton University. Today, in the first part of his talk, Professor Hassan will speak on in search of new quantum matter and phenomena. Due to our request, later on, he will briefly share his ideas and thoughts for developing an authentic research culture in countries like Bangladesh. I cordially invite Professor Jahid Hassan for delivering his speech. Microphone is over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for organizing this, uh, this meeting. Um, I'm certainly very delighted to attend this. Uh, I'm in a different time zone. Currently, I'm uh, spending time at uh, Stanford University. So it's kind of like 6 a.m. for me, but that's okay. Uh, so uh, I'm not probably not fully awake, but I'll, I'll try my best. Okay, uh, wonderful. So I, um, what I will do is uh, um, I'll, I'll make first part of my talk kind of informal. I'll kind of try to introduce the research topic uh, from a broader uh, audience point of view uh, for, for the broader audience. And then later part, I'll use some slides to, uh, to be more, a little more technically specific uh, use, which we may, we may use some 
physics terms and physics uh, equations. Okay, so broadly speaking, I'm interested in quantum physics. And um, you, may, uh, you may think that the uh, quantum physics is a settled topic. What is the new frontier? Uh, yes, uh, probably uh, we understand atoms and maybe particles, uh, but it turns out that quantum physics has a, a enormous, widely open new frontier when you put together particles. So in other words, uh, uh, there is clearly an open frontier when you have tr uh, trillions of quantum particles uh, interacting with each other. So that interaction creates some sort of collective effect. And this collective effect, uh, effects are not always understood, even though we know the fundamental principles of quantum physics. And it turns out uh, we now have more evidence, uh, not just from my lab, uh, in many other places, that uh, these effects are in some way, you can argue that they're also equally fundamental. They're not, even though they're not particle physics. Uh, so understanding them in greater detail is a new emphasis in physics, at least in US, uh, that uh, this collective emergent phenomena is, is, the, is the major new frontier of physics. So now we might wonder for the very broad audience, what is the real life relevance for this. This may be an intellectual pursuit, how to understand nature at the deepest level. But uh, I can tell you something very broad. Uh, for example, the emergence of consciousness, when you put together particles, say your a human brain or any conscious uh, brain network is one example that even though we understand, we believe we understand all the fundamental laws of physics are at least at the quantum level, uh, then do we understand consciousness when these particles are put together? Or uh, it's the most strange. Th so this is the extreme example of emergent phenomena uh, that uh, quantum particles can create that clearly we don't understand. So it's about defining life and death, right? So when you are alive, when, when you're not. So how, uh, quantum particles, the quantum particles are described by quantum numbers and how these quantum numbers put, uh, put together create a collective state, emergent state, uh, uh, and how to trace the, uh, the level of emergence into the fundamental description of quantum. So this is a open new frontier for uh, quantum physics itself. And now we can see that it's a, a interpretation of quantum physics uh, may be connected to consciousness uh, through the emergent phenomena. So this is a different way. I mean, there are other ways of interpreting quantum mechanics that some people have connected to consciousness, but there is a, uh, there is a new way of thinking about it. So that's kind of setting the broad relevance for uh, civilization at large. We want to understand ourselves. We want to understand why we can sense the world or why we can think the world, uh, think about the world and what is the nature of our consciousness. So that's very broad view. Of course, we are not anywhere close to, uh, uh, close to that. So what we do uh, is, is very simple compared to the real complexity. What we do is a very simple set of uh, uh, play with this very simple set of ideas and, and uh, concepts and do experiments to connect, uh, to check, uh, broadly speaking, what is this emergent phenomena and how fundamental are they? We, 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 we're used to believing that these fundamental particle or particle physics things are uh, fundamental, but, uh, uh, but uh, the fact that the emergent phenomena can also be fundamental at a different level is is uh, is not necessarily well established and scientifically uh, uh, well tested. So broadly speaking, that is my philosophical point of view. Uh, why I'm interested in type of research I do. Uh, okay. So now let me be a little more specific. So so far I spoke more like a philosopher than a scientist. 
So let me tell you uh, two concrete examples at a very basic level uh, that you can test on, on in a laboratory setting. So one example of such a thing is a high temperature superconductivity or a, a possibility for room temperature superconducty. Currently, even though we understand quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, string theory, a lot of things, but there's absolutely no uh, clear idea how superconductivity can uh, survive the high temperature thermodynamics or um, it, it is existed at some high temperature. Uh, it's a strongly interacting uh, uh, particles problem, pro pro set of particles emergent phenomena problem. So this so, is, also, yeah. So sorry, sir, sorry for interruption. Will you show any slide? Will, are you showing any slides? No, I'm not and showing I, that okay, yet. Okay, I'll okay, get to okay, that. Okay, in a okay, sir, okay, sir, okay, sir, yeah, thank so you. I'm okay. now just broadly uh, speaking. Yes, okay, okay, sir, thank so you. The second okay. example, uh, so sometimes uh, that, uh, some, some, sometimes you can have, you, um, you, uh, you figure out, you find out something that is, that, that is surprising uh, in, in some way, also as an emergent phenomena, uh, but not necessarily not understood. So the high temperature superconductivity uh, is, uh, uh, is surprising, but also not understood yet. So you, you can call it, it's a problem in quantum many body physics, uh, even though fundamental laws of quantum mechanics are, uh, are unknown if, if I, should, I don't want to say fully understood. Uh, but even then, uh, Sometimes we get surprise, uh, surprises. So there's one such example, there are many examples, but one such example is the topological phenomena. So that's, uh, so I, I work on both, uh, more on the topological phenomena. So this is another form of emergence where quantum mechanics appears in some unexpected ways. So if you think of, uh, solving Schrodinger equation, there is a potential term, right? The V term or U term. So, so the potential terms immediately tells you that the wave functions, the description of the quantum system is to connect uh, uh, clearly, uh, heavily related to the symmetry of the, or geometry of the potential, right? The shape of the potential where you're in a square well or a spherical well or Coulomb well, right? So, it immediately tells you quantum mechanics, quantum description is clearly uh, has a geometric uh, dependence though, because wave functions depend on the geometry through the potential term in the in Schrodinger equations. So the relevance for topology, which uh, tends to ignore uh, geometry in a broader sense, like many different shapes may belong to the same class of topology. Uh, is a bit surprising and it's a bit of a challenging uh, thinking, uh, counterintuitive because uh, you, we're used to thinking in a Schrodinger terms. It turns out to understand the role of topology, you have to go beyond Schrodinger equation. Certainly you have to go to uh, QFT, quantum field theory type of thing, where the starting point is Dirac equation. So Dirac equation gives you a number of surprises beyond the, uh, uh, anti-particle or anti-matter type of thing, right? So uh, in Dirac equation, it turns out you can have uh, in principle, uh, it, it's, let's say an electron is described by, a, uh, by, by a, a, an electron uh, uh, is, uh, is a uh, electron, electrons full relativistic wave function is a Dirac fermion. Uh, but it turns out Dirac Fermi, you can take kind of like a square root of that or half of Dirac fermion that's allowed, that's a mathematically allowed solution to the Dirac equation, which is known as in 3D, they're known as vile fermions. So two vile fermions create one Dirac fermion in, in, in particle physics, you create one electron. So you can see that uh, that concept of electron fractionalization that half of an electron is possible. Uh, but it can, it doesn't happen in a fundamental way, but it turns out it happens in a emergent way. When you put together a collection of particles and you disturb the system, excitations can be a fractional electron. This also happens in fractional quantum Hall effect. 
where you uh, even have fractional charge. In the vial uh, uh, fractionalization, you have you don't have fractional charge. Uh, so the, another example that QFG uh, brings in is another possibility is that uh, it, a solution to the mathematical solution to the Dirac equation, which are by spinners or uh, kind of column vectors for Riemann column vectors. These, uh, these uh, generalized forms of wave functions, it's allowed uh, to have a real wave function. In Schrodinger's sense, we are used to thinking of uh, wave function being, being some sort of complex number of complex function. So since Dirac equation uh, allowed uh, you to have real uh, number wave function, so you can find strange particles uh, in QFT, at least in principle. Uh, in, in its mathematical structure. So one such example is now imagine if you have a, you have a particle whose wave function is a real number, try to take complex conjugate, you get the same thing, right? So that means uh, in Dirac equation, you can have a particle that is its own antiparticle because it's identical now. You take a complex conjugation gives you the same number. So these are called Majorana fermions. So what I do, or what I have been doing last uh, 15 years or so, trying to find uh, various solutions of uh, QFT Dirac equations into real materials. And I'm interested in solutions that, uh, that, do, not, that do not materialize or that, that uh, uh, do not exist in uh, particle physics. So in particle physics, uh, fermions are like Dirac fermions, but in particle physics, there is no vile fermion because uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, nature did not apparently choose to have one when the universe has already cooled down. Uh, vile fermions existed, which is a perfectly valid solution to the Dirac equation existed near Big Bang. So vile Fermi freely existed. Now you, you can have, you can only create them in an emergent way, in a collective way. Similarly, Majorana Fermion, uh, what I said that they have real number wave functions that are real numbers. That's why they are their own antiparticles. So it's not that strange. Uh, and, uh, uh, and again, uh, there is no particle physics example of Majorana fermions, uh, even though Dirac equation uh, would allow you that. So at the heart of QFT quantum field theory, there are many mathematical possibilities that did not, uh, that did not realize in standard model of particle physics. So I'm interested in those things though. Uh, so in other words, I'm interested in if you like an artificial universe where I, where we can have a Lorentz invariance and quantum mechanics, meaning that you have a Dirac equation and all sorts of things that do not exist in the real universe uh, in the standard model. So you'll see that uh, vile fermion or minor fermion are not in the table of uh, fundamental particles. That's because uh, even though they are they are a valid solution to PFT. So. Uh, so we are realizing them in emergent way in a, uh, in a collection of particles. And that's why I say that the philosophical trend here is that are emergent particles more fundamental or, uh, so similarly, we can also create, I did not work on that, other colleagues have done that. You can also create uh, Higgs boson in an emergent way. And so the advantage over for us, of course, we can also create uh, fundamental, the analogs or emergent versions of uh, standard model particles, many of them uh, um, in our labs, but they are, uh, but even, even in that Dirac fermion, for example, you can find, uh, find them in graphene uh, and other materials. So there, the, even there is some advantage. Advantage is that you can now play with them. You cannot uh, play with the, electron being a Dirac fermion or Higgs boson, you just find them, LH, LHC just found them, found those particles, uh, you just observe them, then you don't do anything. Uh, but if you create, uh, artificially create that in an emergent way, they're, they're described by exactly mathematically identical equations, but it's, you have experimental control. You can try to change the mass of the Higgs boson or try to make vile fermions mass 
massive by coupling them, scattering them with a Higgs boson, things like that. So in other words, you could say that inside the materials, topological materials we uh, study, we can simulate early universe in a controlled way. And this is not possible. Sometimes uh, uh, I talk to my cosmologist colleagues and, and uh, they, they're, sometimes they're a bit jealous that we are, we are artif creating artificial universe uh, conditions and solving those, uh, those models um, uh, as quantum simulator in materials where we have a lot of control. So that's one side of it, that the fundamental physics side of it. And additionally, this type of research that now that uh, uh, these new particles create new phenomena and this new phenomena can be can lead to new type of electronic and computing device. For example, both Marana and file, you can make a topological qubit uh, and top, uh, currently all quantum computers suffer from the decoherence problem. But by mathematical nature, uh, topologic, in topological uh, qubit, qubits, the decoherence is zero. Coherence time is, in principle, in theory, infinite. So in other words, you can uh, you, you have a naturally uh, uh, error-free quantum computing for uh, uh, that this QFT allows you to do. So you can make use of entanglement. So that's the other frontier. I'm also pushing this frontier, although I am funded for this type of thing, but although I haven't, um, I'm not putting all my time on the applied frontier, like quant uh, quantum computing direction, uh, but I do have uh, US national funding uh, about more than a few million dollars for doing that sort of thing. Uh, although my heart is more into this, uh, creating this early, early universe type condition in materials and tests. It's like uh, artificially creating a, you get the feeling. One of the reasons in my early career, I, I, I started out in, uh, 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 in not in string theory, but uh, uh, quantum gravity, non-string quantum gravity. And I was interested in early universe and other things, but I was disappointed that I cannot do any experiment. I cannot create a big bang in my lab and see uh, all the theories I talk about or work out whether which one is real. So that disappointment moved me away from that field. But now I'm regaining that young age excitement that now finally, although I did not envision that I'm creating uh, conditions in materials that simulate QFC in our universe. So, so that's, uh, that's broadly what it is. So now I'm going to uh, uh, share some slides to tell you a little more technical. So this is what I was talking is kind of like a dinner chat. Uh, so let me let me get to that. Okay. So as, as promised, so uh, so my uh, I'm talking about my search the search for new phases of quantum matter and phenomena. And uh, uh, and uh, so let me let me see. I don't have many. So formally, I'm formally introducing the topic. What I was talking a bit informally. So much of physics uh, standard model is is uh, established by symmetry and the uh, and the broken symmetry, uh, right? Spontaneously broken symmetry. So if you have higher symmetry, then you have more particles or more degeneracy. And then when the symmetry is broken, you get various fundamental um, uh, particles. So it's a consequence of this, uh, the fundamental force carriers, carrier particles are consequences of spontaneously broken symmetry. This is a standard paradigm, nobody is surprised. Uh, but it, uh, the, the leptons or the fermions are the matter particles and the broken symmetry particles are the uh, force carriers. So, uh, uh, so now, uh, as you know, the uh, combining, finding a quantum gravity is a challenge because uh, gravity is partly because, probably mainly because gravity doesn't have a charge, right? The mass is an illusion. It's a curvature of space time, unlike uh, electromagnetism, for example, there's a charge. So since there is a 
there's no analog of, of gravitational charge in Einstein's theory of relativity. It's very difficult to do a QFT uh, uh, without charge. So, so that's a major challenge. So some set of ideas, uh, the string ideas are you go to higher dimensions and and uh, that what allows you to pick higher uh, symmetry groups and you uh, then uh, one set of ideas involved topological uh, uh, quantum field theory so that uh, so the topology is relevant in fundamental physics from that point of view although symmetry is already describing the standard paradigm, the spe uh, particle spectrum. So you may or may not know that all, many of these ideas, both symmetry and topology, they actually came from condensed kind of matter physicists. For example, uh, uh, when you go from gas to liquid to solid, you are spontaneously breaking symmetry, right? Solid is less symmetric than gas and there's phase transition and then there's emergent phenomena. Right, so, uh, uh, so, and then there are, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, carriers, there are, uh, there are analogs of these things. Uh, same with uh, magnets. In a magnet, you break symmetry because you choose a direction, your north pole is chosen. Uh, in uh, superconductors, you spontaneously break uh, gauge symmetry. It's more subtle, but it's also symmetry breaking. In condensed matter physics as well, uh, at least the topological ideas appeared, uh, topological phases appeared with the quantum hull. Uh, that quantum hull effect is a topological phenomenon. It's not, you cannot find the quantum hull effect by solving Schrodinger equations and Maxwell's equation. You need new ideas, you need topological invariance. So, so uh, 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 topological phases uh, are now all over physics. In fact, uh, someone, some colleague at Princeton showed me that uh, right now, probably most, uh, uh, most uh, research, most of the frontier research involves some form of topology in all over physics, not just uh, in my field of topological insulators. So the framework, as I mentioned a little bit that in, if you, instead of, uh, in, when you have an electron moving through a solid piece of rock or, uh, or a uh, conductor, you, uh, electrons dispersion relation is parabolic, right? P square over two M or uh, its kinetic energy is one half MV square. So veloc energy velocity relationship is parabolic, but, uh, in quantum, when you uh, solve band structure, when you put electrons in periodic potentials, depending on symmetry, you can, you may run into uh, dispersion relations that are linear, uh, crossing uh, li uh, like linear bands. So not all linear bands are topological, but it turns out uh, some linear bands, band crossings are topologically protected, meaning that the, 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 the uh, linear dispersion relation is a consequence of Hilbert space topology, topology of what we are talking about. We're talking about uh, you parameterize your wave function space, and then it's Hilbert space, uh, uh, which contains all possible wave functions of the system. We're talking about the, uh, then you parameterize that, you're, then you can, you can imagine twisting and uh, twisting that Hilbert space. So it turns out that if there is a twist in Hilbert space, uh, uh, for example, there's a donut shape in some parameter re uh, regime, there's a donut shape of the Hilbert space, then you might find a Dirac fermion instead of a regular electron in a solid. So a regular electron is uh, just P square over 2M, but a Dirac fermion now has linear dispersion, right? Even though they're not moving at light speed, their dispersion relation is linear. So, and this can happen in crystals. I'm not going into full theory of topology, but uh, it turns out uh, topological insulators are objects where in the bulk they're insulating, 
and if the bulk of the insulator, if you try to, if you force to force a moving an electron, uh, that movement would be described by a parabolic dispersion relation. But when you bring that electron out on the surface, they will develop a linear dispersion. So, uh, so the surface is kind of relativistic in some sense uh, with a low speed. Uh, relativistic with a low speed, not light speed, uh, but in the bulk there, uh, parabolic dispersion. So now you see that once you have a Dirac fermion on the surface of a topological insulator, you basically have QFT, plus topology built in. This is not possible in graphene. In graphene, you have QFT because there is an accidental linear dispersion relation with the band structure. Uh, uh, but there's, there's no, it's not topological reason. Uh, but in topological insulators, it involves the more subtle thing. It involves the topology of the Hilbert space itself, which creates a, a linearly dispersive particle on the surface. So, so that means now you have a material which is uh, topological and it, uh, it is a platform for doing QFT. Now you go to uh, Dirac equation. Now, in other words, on the surface of a topological insulator, you have a solution to the Dirac equation. Now you can try to change the um, condition, material condition of this topological insulator uh, to create two uh, different versions of the solution of Dirac equation. That is what this field is, has been mostly about last 15 years or so. So one possibility, as you know, if you, this is a standard QFT uh, result that, as I said before, that if you have a Dirac fermion, if you break symmetry, meaning that if you, if you, if you can split the Dirac fermion, uh, then you get the only way to split Dirac fermion is vial fermion. So in other words, two chiral, uh, chiral anti-chiral vial fermion creates one uh, Dirac fermion. So they are like fractional, uh, uh, particles in 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 solution to Dirac equation. So now what we have done here is just figured out since we already worked on topological insulator, we figured out how to change the material condition uh, uh, so that this the Dirac fermion is host on the surface is somehow transformed by break symmetry, certain types of crystal symmetry, so that the low energy excitations are now file fermions. So this is, this is one example of util engineering materials to achieve different solutions to the QFT Dirac equation. So then we, these are called vile semi-metals. It's a little more complicated. And the fact that they're not just, um, uh, uh, they're not just uh, hosting vial fermion, their topological signature is that they have fractional Fermi surface. Typically, Fermi surface is a closed uh, object, uh, but uh, here, at least on the surface, they are fractional. Like half of the Fermi surface is on the on a, on, a, on the bottom, physically separated. On top surface, you have half Fermi surface. The bottom uh, surface, you have other half Fermi surface. So this is a vial metal, so topological objects they are allowed by QFT, but they're not allowed by um, in other ways. Another solution, as I said, QFT Dirac equations allow you to have a real wave function, real number, and those are called Maurana. And they're interesting because, uh, first of all, if you, take, you, if you consider taking complex conjugate of uh, this wave function, you get the same thing. So my runners are their own antiparticles. It's the only example where a particle is its own antiparticle. And they are, these are interesting because you now, uh, because in QFT, they're also uh, quantum entangled. So you can use these exotic particles with different exotic entanglement patterns to create qubit. And it turns out the qubits, uh, qubits you can create using these particles are far more robust than all the quantum computing schemes people have been working on up until now. So this is a very exciting new frontier for quantum computing, but we're still at the physics stage. We, we haven't 
figured out how to make large uh, collection of qubits and uh, uh, break them or uh, operate them. But first you need a new physics principle to discover new technology, right? So, so this is little more mathematical thing that how you can decompose a Dirac fermion, a pair of, of uh, vial fermions. So then you, then you find the material, you create, try to, uh, uh, a condition your material, that's what we do in the lab, uh, so that this condition is realized. But once we discovered uh, three-dimensional topological insulators, inter QFT uh, world opened up to us for realization. And uh, as I said that uh, before Higgs particle was born in early universe, all the uh, Higgs gives mass to all the particles, right? It make uh, electron or leptons massive. Uh, so what were they? Uh, what were they? they were not massive before Higgs field was born? So before that, they were all all electrons were vial electrons, and they were like this. So so this is in this sense what I meant that we can create early universe condition and say simulate uh, electroweak symmetry breaking, uh, creating uh, artificial vial fermions. And then, as I said, uh, an electron can be thought of. Uh, half fermion. So this is also half fermion, uh, two Majoranas, and uh, then you can, uh, then, then you can see a two level system that's a basic unit for qubit and quantum computing. Okay, so that's conceptual framework. And the biggest challenge, of course, you might argue that, oh, uh, we haven't, you haven't found any new physics, right? Uh, because it's all in QFT book. You can just open, flip pages and see them. So what is the new physics? So there are two things. First of all, uh, what is new is that how to find QFT in a piece of rock. So that is what was happening. Uh, the physics itself, first of all, understanding topologies is a, is a, is a, has been an intellectual challenge itself, working out the formality of the uh, theory and experiment. But finding them in real materials is, is, is equally challenging. Uh, so then we have been focusing on mainly finding uh, this QFT, exotic QFT solutions in real materials. And uh, so that, that uh, these are all results from my group. So now I tell you a little bit, okay, so we found topological insulator, we found topological magnet, we found topological semi-metal, vile semi-metal is a topological semi-metal, found topological superconductors. So what, we will, what are we trying to do now? Uh, we're trying to do different things, number of things. Uh, one set of things is this. So are there then topological charge density waves, spin density wave, pair density wave, are there topological correlated insulators like MOT insulators or other stuff? So these are kind of extending the paradigm into, a, um, into the peripheral regime, but we're also searching for, uh, so these are, if you like, kind of known unknown. Uh, we're also searching for unknown unknown that we, uh, we may not have uh, even thought about. We may just stumble upon something. So we have research projects uh, along that line. So in that process, what else we do? So, so I talked about concept, materials. Also, you have to develop lab, laboratory methodology, experimental technology. That is what we have been doing. This is, uh, this is probably most intensive work. So we also have to, so we just talked about this, these things. Okay, so these concepts are there, they're not new. Uh, finding me, me materials and realizing them, it's a challenge, but materials themselves are also not new. They are there, uh, say bismuth selenide or tantalum arsenide, nobody, uh, but then why, what, since the materials are there, why people did not find this exotic topological QFT effects in them? That's because they did not have the technology. They did not know how to do the experiment. So we are also developing instruments and experimental algorithms. So this part of the work is like building SARN or LHC, that you need to build machines. Higgs particle was there, but then uh, you need the technology to find it. So this is our 
this also our work. Uh, this is this is we have been doing that for the last 15 years. We're developing methodologies to probe topological matter, uh, which we use to discover these things, uh, not just the materials. And if you're interested in more technical review, I have a review of modern physics articles in uh, published with uh, Charlie Kane in 2010. And it turned out uh, it's the, uh, in the history of APS journals, this is the third most cited RMP ever. I was surprised to learn that APS editors told me, then I searched and then I found that it's actually the third most uh, uh, review article ever published by APS. So this is, this, that, the reason I say that, so that you know how much scientific excitement is there in a real sense uh, uh, that many scientists are working on it. And also you can find somewhat diluted version of this thing in either in Nature News or Scientific American article published in July, 2017. And if you're interested in more recent development, so you can find two articles. One is Nature Reviews Materials and Nature Reviews Physics. Uh, so this is this this is where we reviewed materials, how we discovered these materials to have this topological quantum phenomena, and then in the nature review physics, we also showed how, uh, for example, this is a, uh, how we utilize or develop further this technology to do this type of research. So the outcome is that our outcome of our research, all these things I talked about. Is, is that now many experiments are enabled by this, those discoveries and technologies and advancements in methodology. So I, this is a slide from 2011, it's 11 years ago. And you can see already back then, all sorts of things were happening on the surfaces of topological insular. This is what I said that now you can introduce superconductivity, quantum Hall effect, quantum phase transition, magnetism, all of Gunness matter physics is happening there. It was happening there. It started happening there in 2010, 11 already. These are all uh, those papers. So not now, I mean, there are, I think 15,000 citation, more than uh, 15,000 citations to this, uh, these results. So, uh, so I also listed a number of other reviews uh, that give you a broader picture uh, like this is on the file fermion in topological semi-metals, chiral anomaly, this is a QFT effect. In fact, chiral anomaly was a challenge for electroweak unification to this uh, weinberg salam model. Uh, so they had figured out a way to get around chiral anomaly. We can create, we simulate, you can create, we, here we, in this paper we showed, you can use file semi-metals to create chiral anomaly. So in other words, lot of theory that went on in uh, QFT and unification or grand unification, we can uh, solve, instead of solving them mathematically, we can solve them using materials doing experiments. So it's kind of like, if you like, these topological materials are quantum simulators of QFT. So it's like a mini computers where you solve problems by doing experiments. So uh, you know the result, uh, by doing that. Okay, so I also wanted to thank uh, uh, some of my students who are, who are, who have significantly contributed to the part. I, I do other things beyond what I showed here. For example, I do a lot of things on superconductivity that I did not show, including high TC. So this part of my research is is primarily Ilya Belopolsky, Su Yang Zhu, he's now a professor at Harvard, uh, Jia Xinin, Guang Bian, Sonia, she's now at Columbia, Go Ching Chang, and we are funded for doing these things. We, uh, we do FPDFT, TBT, uh, 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 we collaborate on samples and materials with different chemistry and material scientists around the world. We also use facilities beyond um, Princeton, other places, Berkeley, Stanford, uh, uh, Switzerland, and Oxford, uh, many places. So I forgot to mention another student, uh, David Shea, who is 
is my first PhD student, who is now a, a professor at Caltech. Uh, he got tenured a few years ago. Uh, so I feel lucky that I have been able to train students who are now leading world-class research in top universities like Harvard, Berkeley, and, and, and Caltech, and places like that. And so it's it's very exciting field of research. And uh, so regarding authentic uh, publication, I'll just say one thing, that if your result is not authentic, then sooner or later in scientific communities, somebody will catch you uh, when they will figure out that your results are not reproducible, right? So all these results I showed, they have these have been reproduced and then after reproduction by other people, they were reviewed also in, in uh, top review journals. So, so this is uh, in, uh, in science, if your result is not reproducible, then something wrong, um, either ethically or methodically or something happened somewhere. That doesn't necessarily mean you're intentionally doing something, but, uh, but I mean, I, I don't know why or how why people try to fake results knowing that sooner or later, that's the difference between science and religion, I guess. I mean, or spirituality where you cannot test and uh, check, check out things, right? So in science, you always get caught. So I think um, uh, developing a culture of authentic research and publication is at the core of a national a nation or a community of scientists or researchers that is central to building a nation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Jayasan, for your wonderful talk. I think there are lots of questions for the audience. So first of all, I have seen the Professor Shamima Karim Chaudhary uh, raise her hand. Uh, you can ask your question, Shamima, madam. Uh, thank you, Jahid. Uh, thank you, Basit, for giving me the approach. Uh, Jahid, I, we met in both lecture when you came to Bangladesh. You remember me? Yes, yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, yes. I, I, uh, I just me. wanted to mention about uh, two days ago in Physics World, in the front page, they reported your exciting discovery of a new form of quantum matter. Yes, actually I forgot. This is another- uh, so I was going to ask, yes. That's wide uh, wild, uh, wild loops, right? Yes, yes. Thinking up to form chains with novel topological forms. Right, thank you for Dr. Shamima for bringing this up. I totally forgot about it in, while I was presenting, uh, preparing this presentation. This That is, really a new frontier because my talk here, what I just talked about, it was all about topology. So in that work, we are, we are taking the field to a new direction. We are saying that, you know, there are many mathematical ideas that uh, we uh, physicists try to apply in physics. So that research is along the line. Why not other mathematical ideas like not theory? So there we are showing that certain types of materials, uh, they, are topological, they are topological, but they're also knotted. So I remember the term topological materials was coined maybe 10 years ago. And uh, I remember even in 2009, Charlie Kane, Xu Chang Zhang and myself, uh, three of us put together an APS invited session and APS declined it. So you'll see that no, that was in 2008. So you'll see that in, if you APS March meeting 2008, this is not no topological session because the one we proposed, the APS thought it's not an interesting topic. So they declined us to, totally. And within two years that uh, the term topological materials was coined. And I believe something similar may happen. And I would say these materials, these other materials would be called knotted materials because they have to go beyond topology. You have to apply knot theory. Sorry, I totally forgot to add that, but this that's the latest, uh, one of the latest things in my life. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful talk. I wish and pray and hope that in your future you'll get the Nobel Prize in 
for this noble work. Thank Inshallah. You. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm not, I'm fascinated by the intellectual um, excitement of finding out new things, new ideas, exploring new possibilities. That by itself is a tremendous reward. You know, I mean, you, you get a prize or something. I mean, I, I own some prizes and uh, it's, 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 kind of, it's just like going to a party and a liner, one line in your CV, but then the, but you, what you live by is the excitement of figuring out new things and hitting up on new frontiers and, and generating, creating new scientists who become world leaders. I, as I, I gave you some of my students, when our professors at Harvard, Caltech, Berkeley, they became, they're becoming world leaders. The first, uh, first time I heard my first PhD student got tenured at Caltech, uh, uh, that was an excitement for me. It, it's, it, you cannot measure it by award. I mean, I mean, uh, by the count of awards. It's, it's about passing on your legacy that your students are like your ch academic children, that your children are now becoming world leaders. That's a big achievement, Jai. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for sharing much. Uh, we have some other questions. Uh, 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 Shamsar, uh, yes, there are three hand raises, but uh, I think there are junior fellows. So uh, um, I apologize. I, I'm giving floor to Professor Shamsar Ali. Then I'll go to Tanvir, Mo, and Pritam. Professor Shamsar Ali. Well, thank you, Jahid. First of all, I wish you good luck and uh, a very good progress in the years to come. Uh, your first talk, impressed me when you were saying philosophy. Even it's not only you, all reputed physicists had a philosophical thinking. I give you an example. In 1968, when there was the contemporary uh, symposium on world physics, all the living Nobel laureates were gathered by Professor Salam and I, and uh, Professor Harun Rashid, let Harun Rashid, who died a few days ago, were in a bench just before th that bench where Dirac and Heisenberg were sitting. I see. And I tell you, and I tell you the conversation. Heisenberg was asking Dirac, "Do the neurons behave quantum mechanically?" And Dirac said, "I don't know." Maybe they, be, they behave quantum mechanically. And I and Harun Rashid were very surprised that these two, the great makers of physics, were talking like schoolboys. And that shows the, 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 the philosophical bend of the mind. So to, to begin with, I shall be very happy when quantum mechanics makes its real entry into the world of biology, especially the functioning of the brain and especially consciousness. The another, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the another point you mentioned is the geometry of the potential and its relation with the wave function. You couldn't be uh, more farther than truth than this because when we were calculating in 1965, the potential between two helium particles, alpha particles, why is it that the carbon fire had to find a new state? Why can't the, the carbon 12 be formed as a result of three alphas coming together? We found the geometry was such. Then what we did, we neglected the, the attractive part because we knew if you go to very high L values, it is only the centrifugal barrier which is responsible for the scattering. So we went mm -hmm. to very... Yeah. Uh, we went to very high L values and fixed the the geometry of the attractive potential later. Uh, and and my supervisor was a Skarmion. Uh, oh, uh, really? uh, you, uh, you worked with Skarmion? Well, he, he uh, not quite. He came as my uh, examiner in oh, Manchester in 1965. I worked mm -hmm. with uh, my official supervisor was Sam Edwards, who was the head of the Cavendish Laboratory. No, the, Scar the reason I say that uh, I spent some time trying to learn uh, Skarmians because they are topological in. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. Yeah, uh, so, they are not Hilbert space topological. But yeah, yeah. So the, the Skarmian, he was very amused 
He said, how could you think and no matter that potential is acting, is this now being used in the synthesis of uh, the, the, the heavy nuclear and supernova nuclear synthesis for 65 years, that potential, mm -hmm. because the, the attractive part was very uniquely, so I just give you an example. Now, my, my, my request to you would be, if you can have a, a skarmion, you can have a Majorana, you can have, of course, the others, the, uh, the fermions and the bosons. I think you should say, it is my deep reverence for Herman Weil, whom I, from my childhood, I was reading his books. You should call Weilian. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, by the way, Her uh, I did not get to mention, Herman Weil was a colleague of Princeton. Yes. So, uh, so Princeton people were uh, amused that uh, uh, that Weil was also at Princeton. So I I I, I use this. We things. were working on Weil stuff. Uh, so it was interesting that it's uh, Weil is a Princeton. Marana Skarmion. is a Princeton leg legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was my uh, my suggestion, but uh, the the question is. Like the, the parallel universes, like the uh, other things, people always look for experimental signatures. What yeah. could, could be a possible experimental signature for what you have been doing? Yeah, so I, um, I'm nowhere close, but let me give you some clue that gives me some hope. So one, uh, I have recently, I, I, my group uh, working with my students, we discovered a number of a class of materials. They, we believe, probably break Lorentz invariance. You know, QFT is built on uh, Lorentz invariance is the, at the core of QFT. If you throw away Lorentz invariance, standard model, everything is gone, right? So, uh, but Lorentz invariance, when uh, max speed is the uh, speed of light, but then at low speed, there is an emergent or like artificial Lorentz invariance breaking. So to, to uh, test various parallel universe ideas, this and this, uh, we, we, are, uh, we are disconnected from parallel universe because of Lorentz invariance. Lorentz, Lorentz symmetry doesn't allow us to access other universes, right? So if you can find a way to simulate uh, uh, systems which physically realistic it, it exists but break not learning invariance then then you can connect to parallel universes in uh, where i mean the parallel universes are not accessible because you cannot exceed the speed of light and the uh, uh, yes. learning invariance the speed and all laws of physics has to uh, obey right so at least i'm saying that in material space what i called material universe or condensed matter universe. Uh, it's a, a theoretically possible. We also have shown theoretically in a paper that it's possible to have met, a, a, in, in a material electrons moving in a way, in an emergent way that breaks Lorentz invariance. So this is my hope that someday maybe we'll figure out how to show a communication between what is in a Lorentz invariant way, it would be called parallel universe. But any, we're not anywhere close. I don't want to overpromise things. But there is some clue. The biggest thing is to how to break out of Lorentz invariant. That is what uh, hindering us to access parallel universe, right? Or uh, if, uh, yeah, anyway, I mean, you, you get the point. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. sir. Uh, so uh, we are all already lagged behind, uh, right? Uh, come to the... come to Bangladesh. You are now and uh, hello, and uh, when you come to Bangladesh or when we go to. I also noticed that it came to me as a surprise. I did not even know that somehow I got elected to the uh, Islamic International Islamic Academy of Sciences, uh, well, where you are also a fellow. Yeah, yeah. It came as a news because I, 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 nobody told me that I was being nominated or anything. Uh, Kumran mm -hmm. Rafa at Harvard, he was also surprised. Both of us got elected to 
Islamic Academy of Sciences. And this is the first time I, I came to know there is an International Islamic Academy of Science. Although well, there are very good people, even the, the, uh, uh, the Egyptian who got the Nobel Prize was a member of it, as a fellow of it. Yeah, also, I, for, uh, other Nobel laureate, uh, Farid Murad is also a member of... Uh, yeah, Farid uh, Murad is a member. Yeah, he, uh, I live uh, close to where he lives. Uh, ah. Yeah, he, he's a, not a physicist, a medicine Nobel laureate. He's also, I see, he's a member of Islamic Academy of Sciences. Yeah, there are very, many good people in it. So come and, but come to Bangladesh, because if you can inspire our theoretical physics is not getting is getting not get, getting very popular because uh, they think they deal with very abstract things but you never know when out of these abstract things something very material comes up. Yeah, we 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 we're, we're, we're showing all these things in materials and then we are not, we are now we have funding to turn them into quantum computing devices and nano electronics and things yeah like this Feynman thing now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this all these exotic physics, you know, they, they uh, sound almost like science fiction, but <laughs> yes. you know, the excitement and this science fiction almost coming close to connecting with parallel universe, right? So, yeah. Okay, okay, okay sir. Uh, can we proceed? Uh, there is another question. Uh, thank you, Shamshara Ali, sir. Uh, uh, there is another question from uh, Professor Hasina Khan. Uh, she is the um, uh, UGC professor and secretary of Bangladesh Academy of Sciences. And her question is, I'm, uh, she has written, I am a biologist, but truly enjoyed your presentation. Just wondering if you have any plans to work on recognizing the deep patterns in living systems. Yeah, that's that's certainly um, a very exciting frontier. I, By the way, I, uh, uh, my wife, my daughter tells me that uh, outside physics, I spend most time reading neuroscience and uh, 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 neuro, uh, neural network type of uh, thing. Uh, I'm because, as I said, that in physics, at least my type of physics, we are trying to connect to emergent phenomena being fundamental, and consciousness in the brain network or neural network is also an emergent phenomena in a fundamental sense. Uh, and it, it, it is this emergent phenomena that is what we are, if we like, in some. Uh, uh, orthodoxical scientific sense, then we are, uh, our consciousness is just neural network, emergent phenomena in neural network, right? So, mm -hmm. but my emergent phenomena in QFT and Lorentz violation and all these other things, it's, it's much more baby step toward understanding the enormous complexity of uh, emergent phenomena in neural networks, which is neuroscience, uh, the real fundamental neuroscience. But I'm certainly intellectually fascinated and I'm trying to make connection as a kind of a dabber kind of, I, that's not my field, but I'm, you know, sometimes you get fascinated, you fall in love with something, you cannot, you, you're not expert in something, but you keep thinking or at least talking to your family members that as if you know, you're making connections. So I'm, I'm fascinated at that level. Yes, I think it's, it's kind of uh, 20, 30, 50 year ahead uh, game. I mean, uh, eventually those connections will be made between emergent phenomena in uh, quantum, many body quantum physics and emergent phenomena in neural networks. Okay, thank you. So there is another question from Tanvir, Dr. Tanvir. So he raised hand. Uh, Tanvir, please, just a quick question. Can you please uh, unmute yourself? Uh, unmute yourself. We cannot. Okay. Maybe someone needs. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Send me a message. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So uh, that was a wonderful talk. I have two related questions. One is. Um, in, in in the work of um, Simon uh, Barry Simon, so yeah, when, yeah, yeah. Barry, when 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 Barry's face came out, he connected yeah, yeah, to yeah. to topological. Uh, uh, he current he connected to the churn number. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I wonder uh, in this area, uh, when did you actually think of using topological invariance? 
Yeah, so uh, in fact, those are kind of old topological stuff uh, because of technology, I did not go to that. You know, I mean, you can say that Aronom bomb effect is kind of topological. So topological phenomena existed in early quantum physics, but they were not recognized as topological. Certainly I call Arnold Baum phase, uh, you know, there's a, uh, uh, this uh, 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 magnetic vector potential thing. Uh, it, it, th those are topological effects in a, in a way, but they were not theorist or experimental. They were not connected to, uh, they were not described as topo, uh, in terms of topological invariance. So the first connection between this Betty phase, Betty curvature field, and um, and the Connes matter phenomena was connected through a quantum Hall effect, uh, uh, and then that led to this Stern number description, basically uh, sigma x y, meaning that the Hall conductivity is quantized, and that quantum number is not a regular quantum number, that quantum number is a topological quantum number. And this happened in the uh, 80s. This is what was done by my colleague who owned the 2016 Nobel Prize uh, with David Thaulis and Duncan Holden is my colleague. So this is all type of topological, uh, but these things are confined to two dimensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're not they don't appear naturally as materials. So all that stuff I showed, you take a piece of rock and you find topological invariance in them. So the quantum Hall effect or David Thaulis or Haldane type topological turn number or turn number as topological invariance, they are kind of artificially created by you have take a 2D electron gas and apply a magnetic field and tune a condition to create, to observe that quantization, uh, which uh, uh, which is a different thing. The topological invariants are different. The topological invariants I talked about are time reverse. Uh, they are time reversal invariant. They don't break time mm -hmm. reversal. So I talked about Z two topological invariants, and in the Weil case, I talked about a pair of Chern number Berry curvature field singularity. So they're kind of like uh, magnetic monopoles in momentum space. So it's kind of like vortices in momentum space. Mm -hmm. so, um, so these are different topological, uh, topological different things, they're different stuff. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I mean, okay. that, that was more than enough. Just a quick question. Um, if if to, uh, from what I understand, the topological materials are very stable uh, because it, it preserves the uh, churn number. Is that right? That's my understanding. That, that's, that's in 2D, quantum hall. But it, yeah, that was the original impression that, uh, yes, quantum hall is stable, but you, even though uh, most of, up until now, most of the experiments are sub -Kelvin. So when they talk about stability, yes, it's, it's kind of like a low temperature stability. You know, to me, a lot of things are stable in low temperature because you, you, there's not enough thermal agitation. There's not enough entropy flowing through, right? So, but my stuff is, I showed that first time back in 2009, that look, you can see the stability even at room temperature. And that is the big, that is a big difference from technological potential point of view, because those low temperature topological stability is not that uh, useful. You're, uh, desktop or iPhone, you are not, it's not, it, you don't uh, dip it into helium, liquid helium or nitrogen, right? You want to operate at room temperature. So this is what created the engineering or applied scientist, um, applied physics, applied electrical engineering interest um, in this field because of our work demonstrating that the 3D topology Z2 invariant, not the Chern invariant mm -hmm. type of thing can be achieved at room temperature. So then you can make devices to operate and lead to application. And that is before, in fact, I the way I view the 
hist history or sociology of this field is that before this happened, before we showed that this room temperature uh, stability of topology, nobody even knew the name of the topology, that the topological effects are interesting. And they existed before. I'm not saying they, those ideas were not there, at, certainly in the math, uh, mathematical physics community. But uh, the, it became a worldwide phenomena after we showed that this is this is, this stability can be harnessed at room temperature, so there is enormous potential for next generation electronics or computing. Then a lot of people started jumped onto it. So as I, I gave you an example, even in two thousand eight, APS rejected our um, session. I mean, there's no we our topological. So that that tells you that. Uh, how much people ignored this type of ideas. And the big key difference was to show that the stability is uh, possible even at room temperature. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tarbi. There is another question from Rajendra uh, Dhaka. Rajendra is the uh, co chair of Indian National Young Academy of Scientists, and he's our great collaborator. So there are a lot of Indian fellows are here. So I'm uh, reading his question uh, for Professor Jaidasan. He is asking, how are magnetic topological insulators are more useful than normal topological insulators? So uh, they are different by two different topologies. So a, a, a normal or regular topological insulator is described by a Z2 invariant, their time reversal invariant, meaning that the topological invariant can be zero or one, the, the value. If it is zero, then it's like silicon. It's not topological. It's a semiconductor or insulator. And if it is one, then it will have a Dirac surface state, uh, protected surface state, which will, should survive up to room temperature. And if you create, in fact, we were the first to demonstrate magnetic topological insulator. It's even reviewed in my 2010 RMP. Uh, if you magnetize a topological insulator, meaning that uh, you dope it with magnetic atoms or impurities or put a spacer layer, then you have broken the time reversal invariance, uh, right? Magnetism uh, is handed chiral in the sense you, in, we learned uh, right hand rule. So uh, you, you broke time reversal symmetry. So then it's, uh, it's not, you, the, your Z2 invariant is lost. It's not Z2 topological anymore, but there is a different way it can also be topological. So this is, this goes to uh, my discussion with Mr. Tanvir earlier. He was talking about, there's an old form of topology through the churn invariant, like quantum hall. So then if you magnetize a Z2 topological insulator, uh, strong enough in some regime, then it can enter a new topological phase. So this, this would be a churn insulator phase. And it turns out we were also happens to be the first to show that how you can create a churn insulator by magnetizing a Z2 topological insulator. But the challenge was that those churn, it's difficult to access the churn, in, churn insulator or churn number or quantum anomalous Hall effect through a transport experiment. This was transport experiment was done by a group in China, Tsinghua University, uh, but their stuff was still at very low temperature, sub Kelvin. Uh, more recently in 2018, uh, we had a paper in Nature where you showed, we, we showed that it's possible to have a magnetic topological insulator, meaning a churn insulator operating at room temperature. So that's the latest on that. Yes, okay. uh, I can tell you the name of the compound. The one we showed is, we called it 166 compound. Um, it's, it's a Kagome lattice. It turns out by going to a Kagome lattice network, you can create uh, uh, you can create a magnetic topological insulator uh, in the regime of a churn insulating state and also have it operate at room temperature. Okay. Okay. Uh, then we have a uh, question from a young uh, student. Uh, if he's Mo, Mo, you can ask your question, please. 
Am I audible? Yes, please. Yes. Now, now I cannot hear you clearly. You can you can write down your question in the chat. Yeah, maybe mind. writing would be easier. Yeah. Yeah, Mo, please write your question. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll ask Pritam Mukherjee if you are audible, please ask your question. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Waalaikumsalam. Sir, I am a student of physics, and uh, my my uh, question might sound a bit amateur, but I have always wanted to be a researcher. And uh, after uh, learning about quantum mechanics, I totally fell in love with that. Uh, in the last uh, few years, I've been and uh, trying to know as much as I can. And uh, I want to be, uh, my, my, currently I want to be a researcher in this field, I, I mean, quantum mechanics. So uh, what would your suggestion be towards a student like me? What can I do to, you know, know better, you know, learn more about quantum mechanics and maybe someday become a researcher in this field? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, quantum physics is a very, very broad field. You know, the people, who work on atoms, molecules, even biological molecules. There are many areas of quantum physics. Um, and, you know, people who work, uh, work on lasers and optics, they also do quantum physics. So I would say, I mean, you should take, do first learn the basics of quantum physics, quantum mechanics, take a, a standard series of, uh, uh, courses and then if you um, if you are if you are interested further then you can take the quantum field theory series one or two if you're in experiments you don't have to uh, go beyond that and um, I think it, it's it, it's always good to be attached to some research group doing things um, even, even though you may not have the full background to understand the research they do. This is why we take high school students or undergraduate students involved them in research. The way we do that is um, uh, part of the reason, at least for me, it's, it's they learn research culture. They know what it means to be scientists, even though they, they may not significantly contribute to the project. So I'm not sure how uh, easy it is in Bangladesh to, for undergraduates or high school students to participate in, to be part of a research group. I mean, it's kind of, um, it, it, it's about learning culture, what it means to be learning research culture that orients your mind and, and your focus. Um, and, yes, I would, I would also, I would have also liked to mention that uh, I have been trying to know about research culture and how they do stuff, but uh, I have, I have failed, uh, you know, I have asked people, but uh, I didn't get answers, you know, properly. So uh, that's a very- I think NYAB is the right platform to address those needs for young yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Peter Moyo, you are doing a lot of programs actually, and you can uh, join with us. You can email us, uh, we can help you definitely. Okay? Don't be yeah, frustrated. stay in touch with NYAB activities that will introduce you to the research culture. So you need to do two things. One is do the coursework, the, the, the technical curriculum thing. Plus you also need to be part of a team uh, so that you can learn the research culture, part of a club, science club or something. So, so then you're, um, you you build up a uh, belonging into the you learn that culture and then you then within that you will pick up how to become a scientist. So also one last okay. thing, could you mention some yeah. books which uh, could be useful for quantum mechanics. Uh, there are books at uh, many many levels. Um, again, I, I would suggest uh, stay in touch with NY, NYAB people and they can guide you more specifically because I don't know your level, so I. I, without knowing that, I don't want to suggest anything specific. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you, sir. People who know you, they can they can guide you better. Yes, oh, yes, you, yes, Peter Mio, uh, you, you just today contact with us and we gave you the chance to, uh, to be here without any resistance. Yes. So we are always uh, 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 very good hearted to our young people. 
So anytime you can contact with us. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. We are, we are very late actually. So just at the very last moment, I will uh, request Professor Muhib Rahman Choudhury. Uh, he is here and he's a uh, very senior uh, professor of our country. So Professor Muhib Rahman, if you want to say and just after your uh, uh, comment or uh, anything else, we'll, we'll finish this talk. Professor Muhib Rahman, are you there? Probably uh, he's not. Uh, I am there. Yes, please. Uh, uh, well, uh, I uh, tried my best uh, to you know, follow this speech by Raheed Hassan. I remember uh, three months ago, I think last year, uh, he gave a speech in another forum organized by the Bangladesh Council of Industrial uh, Research. And uh, I was a co chair in his lecture at that time. Well, I'm really uh, impressed by what you are doing, Mr. Zahir Hassan. We look forward, well, maybe uh, not in my time, next time, but in the future, there will be some wonderful new materials which your research will be leading to. I wish you all success in your endeavor, and I uh, appreciate that NYAB is trying to inspire the young scientists of Bangladesh in their research work. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Sir. So thank you. Uh, okay. Professor Jai, this is the last question from the young student. Uh, she is very interested uh, to ask you one question. She is most yeah, interested. Sure. So her question, she has written, uh, you have mentioned about authentic publication and there were uh, some papers stating evidence of Mariana Farmios, but uh, those are not reproducible as it was stated. It has been more than decades. Marianas are well established in theory, but not spotted in physical. Do you think they still have potential for topological qubits or it is a near dead end? Uh, no, it, it is, you know, science, um, uh, in order to, to clean, uh, for extraordinary claims, you need extraordinary evidence, right? And uh, those experiments are very difficult. So people do certain things, certain, uh, uh, certain levels of experimentation and uh, other labs do not always have similar technology. So sometimes that can happen. That, uh, that doesn't mean they're not reproducible. It, it could be for a different reason. It's not for uh, ethical or lack of ethic. I mean, it's not ethical reasons. So when you are doing very delicate, this is why I give you one concrete example. This is why when LHC was built at CERN, so they decided, okay, so this is uh, enormously uh, expensive project, multi-billion dollar thing. Now, uh, if there's only one experiment done, and everybody agrees they found something. There's no one to check, right? Whether they did it right. They can all uh, collectively decide that, okay, we'll call that this is, we found something because other people cannot check us out. Uh, uh, so what they did is that they decided uh, there'll be two independent teams, both using the same facility, doing the same thing so that they can cross check that um, wh whether they, whether, one group, whether one group of, uh, whether the, the result is reproducible using the same facility, but different group of people, right? So, uh, so that uh, cross-checking independent uh, opinion is important, independent checking is important. Uh, now to the specific case of Marana, there's one group of researchers, uh, I guess you're referring to Delft group, I know the, uh, 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 lab director there, Leo Kuenhaven. So they were doing certain experiments. They claim something, you know, these are very delicate experiments and they saw some results and it's, uh, it's using their approach. Uh, and that it turned out to be some, in some places it was reproducible, but largely not, uh, but uh, there are other approaches to Marana. Marana is a very broad concept. Uh, we have our own approach of Marana. Uh, there are 
a number of other things. So this, this field is uh, clearly uh, very promising and open-ended. So in other words, what I'm saying that they are technical or engineering solution to create Maorana, let's say it's not, it, 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 it did not work, it did for whatever reason, that doesn't invalidate the physics. Uh, there are other technical solutions. And uh, there are many examples of major achievements in science when that sort of thing happens. Uh, so what failed is, if you take it as a failure, you can, if you like, uh, 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 Leo's, Leo Kuenhoven's uh, engineering, the, the method of engineering Maharana did not work, but there are other methods of engineering things, there are other uh, methods of doing it. So it's in the US, it's a well-funded uh, research. I'm, I'm even, I'm funded for that by the US government for doing that sort of thing. But my approach is different. It's not Leo's uh, type of thing I'm doing it in what I call the feel-free platform for Marana. Um, so we'll see. I mean, these are very technical, delicate challenges. So that, uh, but the 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 uh, bottom line uh, here is that it's it's possible and uh, it's it's not a closed game. It's it's open-ended. It, it there you have to find more uh, clever technical solutions to create it so that other people can also reproduce. Otherwise, if you just build one computer, uh, quantum computer, that's not enough. You want to build many. So you want other people to be able to reproduce your method so that they can also create what you created. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's, it's, more, uh, it's quite open, it's possible. Nothing has been closed. Okay. So just uh, prior to finish, uh, I would like to thank again Professor Jai Dasar. He told me he is in uh, traveling, and right now he is in California. I think a very odd time zone, and he told me that he cannot give much more time. Uh, so I promised him that I will take only half an hour. But I think uh, in the pre-meeting he gave me half an hour, and in this meeting he gave us around three to half an hour. So one point five hours, more than one and half hour. So Professor Jaidasan, we are really grateful to you. And I, I think, I feel that we need more time for discussion. In future, we'll yeah. cordially invite you again. And even if you are in Bangladesh, definitely physically we'll arrange a seminar. And uh, I, I like saying, I would like to- I, There is a chance I'll be visiting this December for oh, some more. family event, but it's a very brief visit, maybe for five days. Uh, we can connect. Uh, yeah. for brief but i i would love to be more involved yes yeah. thank you thank you very much we'll, we'll be in, uh, in touch with you and yeah. we'd like to thank all the audience for your uh, precious time uh, for joining with us it's in a short notice and now i'd like to uh, uh, take over the microphone uh, hand over the microphone to dr sabina for the next um, uh, oral presentation uh, session and we'd like to thank professor jai dasan once again for your wonderful speech and for your time Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. And thank, thank you very much uh, to all of you as well. It, it has been a pleasure. It, it's I'm honored to have the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. You're welcome.